morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Daniel Sullins. I work for uh, TVA Sequoia Nuclear Plant, which is just right out the road, just north of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Sonny Daisy. Today, we're going to be talking about the CB832 high current test set. Now, uh, what drove us to have to, uh, to do this CB832 class today was a PER, or a Problem Evaluation Report. The uh, PER identified that the incumbents at the field, or the students, were not familiar enough with the equipment and were having issues in the plant using the equipment. So that drove us to do a analysis, and we found out doing analysis that we needed to do a class, so what we're doing today. A little bit about myself. I have been an electrician for 15 years, been in the nuclear side of the house for about eight, been at Sequoia for seven. You guys know me, I've been around. The uh, CB832 is uh, something we use um, maybe not every day, but quite a bit. So, and it's very familiar with another piece of equipment that we use on a regular basis, the MS2. The, uh, let's talk about the name there, CB832. What's in a name? High current test set. What, what do you guys think that this test set does? Test for test. high current. Circuit breakers. Test circuit breakers. It does test circuit breakers. It injects current. It doesn't test for it, it injects. For overloads. Uh, for overloads, that's right. You can test motor case breakers and overloads. Mostly use it for overloads, and that's what the topic of discussion will be about today. The uh, you might tell me what a possible side effect of injecting too much current might be. Fire. Fire is one. Damage to equipment. We've got a short little video that shows you what might happen if you were to inject too much current. Now, before I start it, let's talk about what we've got here. Okay, now it's kind of hard to see, but you can see there's a, obviously a big battery right there. And then coming off these posts are some little wires coming down to the disconnect. Coming off both posts. All right, watch what happens when he closes the disconnect and makes the circuit complete. All right, you can see instantly the current is too great for the wire. The wire heats up, melts the insulation, which is what the smoke is. See the wire getting cherry red and eventually burns in half, which breaks the circuit. So that's a that's a very possible side effect. If you were to take this test equipment not knowing what you're doing and inject too much current in the test equipment. It's been done in the past, it's not a pretty sight. Alright. Let's talk about the enabling objectives. From memory, explain the purposes of the high current test set, CB832, as described in the user's manual. Now, we've already kind of talked about that a little bit, about what we use this piece of test equipment for. The next one, from memory, given a diagram, demonstrate how to properly connect the CB832 high current test set to a device to be tested per the user's manual. And then last but not least, give it a plant procedure and a device to test, set up and properly test the device using the CB832 high current test set per the plant procedure. Now, as far as evaluation for today's class, it's going to be classroom participation. And it's going to be our last objective here, which is an actual lab activity where we're going to give you a procedure, give you an item to test, and you're going to take the CB832, run it through its paces, and test it per the procedure. Tell me what that picture is uh, right there. Input. What'd you say? Mo motor controller input. Motor controller, yep. That, that as you can see below, uh, in case you just missed it, it's kind of a trick question. It is a, it's a square D reversing starter, typical square D reversing starter. It's what you may find and what you will find in our plant. We use these mostly in our uh, reactor MOV boards to power our MOVATs. And uh, square D's are, to my knowledge, and per the procedure, the only ones we test for the overloads. 
Now, let's talk about the overload block itself. It's, it's kind of a small piece of this right here. You got your starter right here, your reversing starter. The actual overload block is right here. Now, I've got an example I'm going to pass around, and there is a glove in the box. So if you want to take it out, please put the glove on. this overload. The overloads are actually these three screws right here that you can see <coughs> right there. Now on the bottom of this block are three auxiliary contacts. You've got the overload contact, the alarm contact, and your comm. And those will come into play here in just a minute with the CBA 30 cable. We'll talk about them in more detail. Alright. Let's talk about the controls for the high current test set. Pretty self-explanatory. If you're familiar with the MS2, then you will be familiar with this. It's very, very similar. The uh, power switch is on the left, number one. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's on or off. Number two is your main fuses. Number three is your control fuses. Now, if you were to plug this thing in and you know that your, your power feed is good, you don't have a problem there, and you don't have anything showing up on the LED uh, <coughs> screens there, chances are you've got blown fuse. It's either going to be the control fuse or the main fuse. Most likely control fuse is the smaller of the two. Or three, actually. The main fuse is the one component. All right, talk about number three. Oh, number four, I'm sorry, the output control knob. That's what you're actually going to use to get an output. It'll show up on your output terminals, which we'll talk about here directly. You're going to get set at zero, and then whatever you want to get an output, you turn it up. It's like a good stereo. All right, number five, output on light. If you plug this box in, and for some reason that light is lit, chances are, You've got an output down here. That light is on. Make sure you're aware of where your hands are, and because these right here will have a good chance of having an output on that you don't want to be touching. Number six. That is like we talked about just a second ago, the output terminals. Now if you'll notice there's four of them. You've got the common on the right, 25 amp on top, 125 amp on bottom, 500 amp on the left. Now, no matter which one of these three you pick, you've got to complete the circuit by going back to COM. All right, number seven, contact. Contact block up here. Now, that goes back to what we talked about with the auxiliary contacts on the overload block. You're going to take just a set of leads. It doesn't have to be much. Meter leads work fine. And plug in to your, your auxiliary contact, your overload contact, and you're common, and you're going to take them up, and you're going to plug them right there. And what that does is that allows whenever the contact breaks on your overload, it's going to stop your timer, which we'll talk about. All right, number eight is your initiate switch. It's got three positions, maintain, off, and momentary. Now, off is your, your normal position. When you, when you take the lid off the box, that's what it's going to be in or should be in. The way momentary works, it's just like a jog button. Bump it down to momentary, you release it, it goes back to off. The purpose of momentary is whenever you're getting ready to do a test, you've got to figure out, okay, so I want to inject 300 amps. You don't want to start to test and drive up because that's going to affect your time. You want to bump it down momentary, turn it up, get where you need to be, and then let, let your overloads cool off and then go back and hit maintain start, which is what we're getting ready to talk about now, the maintain. If you flip the switch up in the maintain position, it's like an on switch. You flip it up, it stays there. So you take it to the off position. All right, number nine is the tire block. Up top, you've got your LED display, which will display either cycles or seconds, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, cycles is mostly used for multi case breaker testing. Seconds are what we use for overload testing. And then if you're looking for uh, a tenth of a second or a hundredth of a second, you would make that choice there as well for the seconds. And then 
you have your stop mode. And that right there is what, in conjunction with your contact lock up here, is going to stop that timer. Now, current is mostly used for multi case breaker testing. Normally open and normally closed will be used for your contact configuration when you're doing your test on your overloads. Normally closed is generally the one you're going to use. Okay, let's talk about the ambient block. Same thing as the timer, you've got an LED display. And basically all this is, it's like an external meter. It's just built in for your convenience. You've got a range selection switch. 20 amp, 200 amp, 2000 amp, and 3000 amp. Basically all it does is moves a decimal point. All right, Colin, tell me, if I'm looking to inject 300 amps into what I'm testing, which range switch or selection would I be in? I would guess the 2,000 amps because you want it in that range. That's correct. It, it's kind of, it's different. It, you got to really pay attention to what you're doing here. The way it's set up is if you're going to be below 20, you'll be on 20. If you're going to be within the 200 amp, you'll be under the, two, you know, on the 200 amp. And, it, you know, it's basically, you know, you're looking for, like for instance, 300 amp, you're going to be in the 2,000 amp range because you don't want to have it on 200 amp because it stops there. And then your display mode. It works hand in hand with your initiate switch. Whenever you're bumping up to get your output current, you want to have it in memory. And what that does is it will remember the highest output you attained. So if you have it in memory and you bump it up to momentary and you have run, say you're looking for 300, you bump it up, okay, you only got 200. Okay, so you're going to have to reset the display mode, take it back to zero, bump it again, you'll drive it up, let the overloads cool, and start the test. Normal mode is the what you'll be in whenever you actually run your test. And what it is, it just it's a running tally of how much you've got output. When you hit stop, it resets. It doesn't remember anything. Okay. Now I've got a short little video on how not to use the CBA32. See, you got some guys doing some testing. Very poor camera skills. <laughs> All right, let's pause it right there. Okay. Anybody tell me at first blush what they're doing wrong there? That's one. Uh, they're vice grips. But, yeah. You've got. From the, over, the, over, the output terminals, they have holes in them that use bolted connections. Now you can use vice grips. There's really nothing wrong with using them. It's not the safest way to do it. But if you use it like that, you want to have some sort of protection. Rubber mat, plastic bag, insulating blanket, anything. Because what you've done there effectively is increase your danger of a shock value from those outputs, I don't know, say tenfold. Because you've added about six or eight inches of exposed metal. It's a bad thing. Okay, anybody else notice the second thing? Shouldn't you be wearing gloves? Well, okay, so it's three things. Part of the yeah, yeah. The gloves, cover. obviously, yeah, good, good case there. The cover's off. The cover's off, that's right. The, the test box is not designed to be lifted out like they've got to sit there. It's designed, it's in a box, you take the lid off, and then there you are. I don't know why they decided to lift it up out of that, because all you've done there is increase your shock, shock hazard. Uh, all it takes is for me doing a long duration test. Some of these tests run five, ten minutes. You'll be talking with your buddy, talking about the weekend. Prop your hand up and reach over there and right on the circuit board. It could happen. I've seen it happen. So never ever use one like that. Lift it out, you know, leave it in the box. It's designed to be left in the box. It's not designed to be pulled out. Is this a stage video, or are these people actually trying to do a test? These people are actually testing. I found this on YouTube, so I, I don't know who actually they are. Okay. MS2 and CB832. It's the two common testers we use. Very similar layouts. Two major differences. Now I've got spec sheets in your handouts. 
you don't mind, somebody take a look and tell me what the weight differences are. What do you got, Colin? Uh, the MS2 is 33 pounds, and then the CB832 is 75 pounds. That's right. Okay. That's a big difference. Okay. And somebody tell me what the difference is in output, average output. The maximum. What do you got? Uh, the MS2 is 240 amps, and then the CB832 is 500 amps. That's correct. Okay, now, the main deal about the weight on these boxes is at my plant, now I'm sure you have something similar at your plant, if you lift over 49 pounds with a single person, you're required to have a little piece of paper called a JSA, which is a job safety analysis. Now, what that job safety analysis, the whole purpose of it is to give you the safest way to approach doing a task. If, you have, if, you just, if one person has to lift that box, it requires a JSA in my plant because it's over 49 pounds. So you can get around that by using two people to carry it. It's not the most convenient thing because the box is only this wide. It's kind of bulky. It's easier if, if you're going short distances for one person to do it, but if you do it that way, you've got to have a JSA. All right, now, we've heard of the average differences, which one puts out the most and whatnot. Say you're looking for a 200 amp output to test some overloads. You've got to go up two flights of stairs. Which tester are we going to use, or which one would you use? A light one, the MS2. The MS2, that's correct. Now, it seems pretty obvious when you put it in that context, but the downside to using these testers is your test leads will make a big difference in how you go about testing. You have the wrong selection of test leads, they're too long, then you're not going to get the <coughs> output you're looking for. It can affect greatly your output. You'll have a duct of reactants on your test leads and it will drop your output greatly. So with the proper test leads and uh, everything's like it should be, then the MS2 is definitely the way you want to go. Okay, in the handout you also have a little exercise in the back. Uh, this is part of the classroom participation. You've got the output terminals on the left and the overload block on the right. Now, let's say we're looking for a 500 amp output. Somebody look at that and tell me how they would hook that up. If you want to draw them, you can. It's no problem. Anybody? We got. I think you'd go from the 500 amp and then try and hook it up in in a series. Okay, that's that's right. You want to hook it up in a series. Now I've got a short little animation here showing you just how to do that. You can see you've got coming off the 500 amp and coming to the bottom of the ear with the left overload coming up. I'm going in series. Good thing it feeds up through there, comes down to this one, comes back, and it completes the circuit going back into the common. Now. Jim, why do you think I want to test it in series versus parallel? Um, well, if it were kind of in parallel, then the, the current that you're trying, the other current you're trying to test, could go to another pathway. That's so correct. You're getting accurate reading. That that is correct. Another problem testing in parallel versus series is if you're shooting current through this, you could actually trip and overload, and it wouldn't stop the timer. Think of it like Christmas lights. Your old Christmas lights are in series. One burns out, you're done. Go away. Or test or replace, you know, replace the bulb. The new ones are in parallel. They, they tend to work a little better. All right, in summary, we've gone over the the uh, the, te the usage of the CBA 32, we've gone over the controls, we've gone over what we use mostly for in the, the plant. It's a good piece of test equipment. It's very versatile. And uh, as long as you know how to do it and use it correctly, won't do any wrong. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Nice job, Daniel. You you really worked hard. You put you incorporated like everything we talked about yesterday. Yeah.
that was good impressive. Job. Good job. <coughs> um, okay, how did you feel up there? I felt I felt a lot better today than I did yesterday. Good. Well, it, it shows. It was it was it you it was definitely noticeably crisper the way you put it together. Nice job. Good. I'm glad it felt better on that end too. Okay, well let's give you some feedback. Sue, you want to start us out with feedback?